We've got match three coming right up of the day. I'm looking forward to this one, Sotil. And uh, what, have, what have you made of the day so far? It's been a quick one for us as uh, we've had some pretty quick games played out. But, you know, what, what do you make of this? Is this what you expected when we knew we were coming into this format? Just about, yeah. I think it's been interesting. And I think I will say that Europe seems to have a slightly better handle on what's going on than APAC did um, based on what I was able to catch of their broadcast. Um, because their broadcast was a lot of just, you know, Totem Shaman and Murloc Paladin, you know, kind of what we said, you know, at the end of week two when we were talking to each other, like, mm-hmm. what are we going to see next week? Oh, probably just like Totem Shaman and Murloc Paladin, right? Um, and, you know, if the casters can think of that immediately after like two minutes, there's probably a good chance that that's not like the optimal strategy and you might be able to go deeper than that. Um, so I like that we're seeing, you know, the, the Weird Shaman from Swids, Highlander Paladin, Evolve Shaman, uh, Galakron Shaman, whatever you want to call it. Um, seems like the EU players just have a little bit of a different twist on things, and I, I have liked seeing that so far. Yep, sorry, I, I know I was looking off camera then, I was listening to you. So rude! I know, but I was just, uh, you know, going through the deck list, just seeing what we've got cooking here. Swids has his Priest available as that fourth deck, and Viper has his Hunter. So again, what we've seen, more of the same of what we've seen with this Paladin, Shaman, Druid, Hunter, but the Priest... It hurts me to say this, is Resurrect Priest, from what I can see. So uh, expect me to be grumpy if we get to cast that game, Sato. Uh, but I do see getting work done here against the, the a lot of the decks we'd expect to see. I feel like this is actually a really good pick, and I'm very interested to see how it performs, considering that Viper has chosen to leave it up. He has indeed. Um, so there's here's some vanilla stats for you. Again, this is class versus class, so it doesn't take into account archetypes, which are dig into a bit more at the end. Uh, Priest overall, 51% win rate as a deck when it's been left up, so nowhere near as impressive as the Hunter stats that I was bandying about in the last couple of series. Um, It does only have a 33.3% win rate against Hunter specifically, which is the deck on the other side of this series. Um, But it does have 61 against Paladin and 57 against Shaman, Mm. which are the two sort of ever-present decks in the format. Um, So it would seem on the surface of that as a pretty bad deck to leave up, but you've got to take into account that most of those games that are factoring into those stats would be against Totem Shaman, would be against Murloc Paladin, because you know they're, they're very, very common, whereas Viper is doing something just a little bit different from that. So he probably feels that his decks, the way he has things built, they can actually go long enough to be able to compete with Priest a little bit later. Yeah, and also, funnily enough, some of those numbers will be coming from Galakron Priests that do act very differently yes. versus a lot of these decks. Because we've seen from a lot of play we've done with Galakron Priests that if you don't have the answers ready, locked, and loaded, you can just be overran by, you know, Murloc, uh, Murloc Paladin, Totem Shaman, I imagine. Because if you just, you have a lot of AoE clears, but the second you miss one, you, you're often dead. Like, that's just the game. So maybe some of those wins and losses are being influenced by that and not necessarily Resurrect Priest, which I think is a little bit more consistent in some of those exact matchups. But we'll, uh, we'll find out how it goes. Just looking overall, uh, as these lists seem to be uh, going a little bit crazy for me now, but the, the, <laughs> the Viper Shaman, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more as well. I think, I think it might have actually ended up being a very, very good choice from Viper to go not only for the obvious one, or the secondary obvious one, but to go to, like, the third option as well, which is a little bit different. Yeah, oh, sorry, I he's going li- for the Evolve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's going for chance, Evolve. Yeah. And I, I like this deck as an archetype choice. I'm not necessarily sure this is built, like, 100% optimally from Viper's side, but, I mean, when you're sort of flirting around with sort of brand new decks in the metagame, how likely are you really to build anything 100% perfectly? Um, but for me... I'd like to see a bit more one-drop power in there, um, so you can more consistently, you know, win the board first against uh, Murloc Paladins and Totem Shamans on the other side. Um, you know, just some of those, you know, Orc Merchant deal one damage kind of effects coming out, um, just to be able to make sure you power through the early game against a lot of decks. And um, we saw Viper fall behind, kind of for that reason, I think, in his previous series with this deck. So we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we did see as well, just the, uh, for me, that the double Corrupt Elementalist is, could easily be a one drop instead of, of at least one of them, right? Because that's two six drops in a, in a meta you're expecting to be fairly aggressive. So that is uh, one slot that we've seen drop down to one. And also the Dread Corsair we've seen cut down to just a one off to make room for some more one drops in some lists. But anyway, 
let's get to it. We're going to go into game number one, match number three of the day. This is the upper bracket of the group A. The winner gets to uh, chill for the rest of the day. Is that going to be locked in for Sunday? It's going to be Priest versus Hunter. And as I mentioned, just breaking down the stats at the beginning, uh, Priest is a big dog in this one. Uh, no, I don't mean Roman Reigns. Um, in this matchup that we've seen so far, just based on, what, 20 game sample size overall through the Swiss, um, five wins out of... Oh, no, sorry, 15 game sample size. Five wins out of 15 games for the Priest. Yeah, not looking... Too great there. I'm just going to double check with this priest list overall. Yep, nothing too outstanding. If you've played against a resurrect priest on ladder, it will look very similar. There is mana sabers in there, so there's the the hunter ace special uh, for the uh, for, for the ramp priest, I guess. But yeah, it's still looking fairly standard gameplay in terms of you want to c get some of the earlier taunt minions down, the con uh, convincing infiltrator or cart and defender, and then basically try and keep resurrecting them the mana sabers do throw a little bit of a wrench in that that plan but they do open up a lot more in terms of just getting to the uh, deeper parts of your deck a little bit quick now we're gonna see how how greedy switch wants to be here and yeah I, can, I did expect this actually just the heal because he has breath of the infinite so this 2-2 two -two always dies whenever Switz wants it to. So there's yep. no rush, right? You can literally out-heal the damage. So until Viper commits more to the board, there's no reason to penance it. I think a lot of people would penance it because they're like, oh, I'm, I'm getting hit. Stop it. But you're not really at the end of the day, right? You, you even that out yourself. Sure. Going into four drops seems pretty good to me. Zix are pretty flexible with the rush, but also Vibe has two four drops. And honestly, with a bone rate as one of those, it's a nice bit of insurance against the convincing infiltrator if it comes down soon. Mm -hmm. it can be one of the minions you actually don't mind getting killed off. The evasive fell wing now. <sighs> so good versus Priest. Yeah, what does Swids even do against this? Just takes it for multiple turns at a time. And although I'm as big a culprit as any of complaining about Resurrect Priest and how uh, yes you how, are how how annoying it is. Yep. These are the games you don't complain about much because game. I appreciate that games exist where they don't just draw convincing infiltrator. <sighs> To Psycho Pump, into Resurrect again. You know, yeah, these yeah. games do happen. It's just, you don't remember those because they don't make you, you know, they don't make your soul hurt. Uh, yes. So you don't quite remember them as much. But I will admit, this does happen and it is putting Swids in a rough spot. And these <laughs> are the hands that Hunter beats. So here's, here's what happened. Raven gets super tilted by Resurrect Priest. So he was having a conversation with me one day and he was like, oh, how... Like how isn't it not how is it not just the best deck in the game? Like you just can't do anything. They just play a minion and then you just never get to hit face again. I was like, well, Raven, sometimes they just don't have the minion to play on four or five, and then their whole deck does nothing. So from that day onwards, Raven has just sent me a screenshot of every time Priest has played a turn four or turn five minion against him, and it's every game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only reason I'm saying that no. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't draw it. It's for the broadcast, because it's my job to be slightly less biased. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I was just casting this to no one, oh, it would sound different. This is a, a pretty solid hand, though, from Viper, and also a, a small thing, and it might not come into play, but the Varanus, meaning that you can just ship one of your smaller minions, or potentially an Unleash, into a high-health, annoying taunt, even if that's just... How to defend a convincing infiltrator or a dragon could be enough of a tempo swing to open up that small window to just do enough damage to win the game. So, mm -hmm. it, it, even the fact that Varenus is there is looking not too bad for Viper at all. Do you think we can make a tier list of how big a sip each GM takes of their tea? I must consider. 
We probably could. I are don't you, know. Are you even aware of the surrender thing? Were you watching APAC at the point? I, I may have just completely missed this. I might have missed it. Okay, Surrender spent an entire game just taking the tiniest, most adorable sips out of a uh, cup of tea that he had in front of him, and like Jir and Derek consider. were just freaking out about it, and it was amazing. Ah, okay. Whereas it looks like Viper takes just manly gulps. There you go, yeah. yeah. Quickly. It's evasive Fae Wing. It's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Swids right now. I was just going to say, Viper's going to have to go and get another drink in a minute. He is going crazy. But it is a nightmare, isn't it? There's just no way to deal with it. The biggest problem here, really, for Swids is not only the lack of taunt to then resurrect, but he hasn't gained a second AoE either. I will say, his version of the list only runs Breath of the Infinite as AoE outside of Plague of Death, which is AoE, but also is a turn 9 card or a 9 mana card. So, the fact that he's not got anything to clean up this 5-4 isn't really, sh or shouldn't be too much of a surprise, right? Because it's unlikely you're going to have double Breath of the Infinite in the top 10 cards you don't. Yeah, this setup turn from Swids is huge, though. Like, this turn was so sick, it looked like a terrible turn. And it kind of is. Mm. But if you look at the Soul Mirror he's now unlocked next turn, it's the absolute nuts, right? Because, like, what would Viper even develop into this that Swids wouldn't just happily gobble up with the Soul Mirror as well? Like, this was such a smart turn from Swids' side. Yeah. Just to, just oh. to sit back and take it here for a turn. Yeah, and, and there aren't many minions in the deck this would be relevant for. Oh, typical. <laughs> the, the, the second breath right now. Not yeah, any yeah, turns yeah. earlier for Swift, that's unfortunate. So are going to come out and they're both going to end up with a uh, half of a Bone Ray. Also, funnily enough, Swids ends up with a Zixor in his yep. Death Rattle Pool. Uh, sorry, his Resurrect Pool, as well as his deck for the Prime. But yeah, I was going to say, the Hunter doesn't even run that many minions that you could play into a Soul Mirror with the purpose of living. For example, mm -hmm. a Dwarven Sharpshooter. The reason Viper didn't go for that is, what's the point, right? You don't play pretty... You play a 1-3 on turn 6 right. just to play around a Soul Mirror. Not worth it. Yeah. And, like, Switz's mm -hmm. res pool is now just completely gone out the window. Like, he's never resing a bunch of Cartoon Defenders and Bone Raids. Right. I mean, I guess he got some Bone Raids out of the equation, but you understand mean um it just means he's now competing sort of far more honestly i guess and that was just about the only out he had in that position just to be able to say you know what i have to deal with this board state unless i draw exactly second breath of the infinite off the top i'm not gonna have a board clear unless i set it up like this yep oh Ooh. well uh I was okay gonna be upset. Sure you always is. do this, right? Hunter cannot fight back. This is this. A little bit worried about Unleash, maybe, but... <laughs> yep, Viper can't believe it. Viper, I would be upset too, don't worry. It's getting close, though. Oh, the old oh, Waste Warden waste Unleash warden combo. Nutty. Oh. With the Unleash? Yep. I mean, it can't do it the way I think you're suggesting you do it, right? No, but you can do it. <laughs> okay. it, clears, it clears the board, is my point. Yes, it does, yeah, but you have to, you don't get to keep your minions. You have to yes. just deal the damage like this and then yep. shoot it, because it's all minions, not just enemy minions. So, that happens. Most importantly, it gives him as much a leeway as possible to go Alexstrasza into Alexstrasza, and then hopefully, maybe, not even that, the game could end with a Magrand Slam. The, uh... oh. That is the most likely. That is the most likely outcome, admittedly. Still there insane. are four of them. Really, Sandhoof is a pretty big risk, I would say. Although, is there nine coming from hand for Viper in this position in any world? Probably not. On not on turn right? nine, there is on no. turn ten. <laughs> Well, no, 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 he'd still just have Dinotoma Brown Hero Power Lethal, right? Job done. Oh, this turn, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so I think I think playing around that's probably intelligent. Life and hope are worth fighting for. 
does mean he, he underdevelops a little bit, so he's slightly worse against the, the Dragon Queen coming down, but probably a necessary evil to not just die to Dino Temple. Long enough, it's One note as well, uh, you did mention earlier you can't make tons of waves of, say, Kartok Defenders. He can with a Grave Ruin. He runs one in the deck, yeah, so fair. it is possible. It's just not going to come from Mass Resurrect and, and so on so on, right? It's just that uh, there is an option where Swords could heal back up to full very quickly because outside of Zephyrus, Viper doesn't really have a way to negate a Grave Ruin. So, it's possible. So does he attack and then just plague i think that's what he's looking at he does also have to look just about every turn oh, about what a uh Mirazond does for him he yeah. is yeah. oh he can oh, okay, yeah. i was wondering whether double trade Mirazond was actually better it was worth considering for sure yeah he's winning he just on board trades... right I think he just trades there to get another prime into his res pool, right? Just valuing that over the damage. Oh, it's so good, son. It's just <laughs> the best card. It's look at this! Why do people not put that card in their deck? <laughs> Play the Morrisand. I mean, aren't you literally always dead if you play the Morrisand here? Yes, but I want to see that many cleft hoofs on the board. I okay. Wonder. So is this actually... Does it have to be Mass Resurrect? Is that more likely to actually win you the game than a Akartut Defender? I guess he's seen Unleashed, so it means the breakpoints are unfun for Viper. Yeah. I mean, that's still only Ma one Carta, right? Yeah, if he plays Mass Res, like, the Six Horse don't do anything, right? Because he's running into three fives on the other side. So, like, nothing adds up mana wise, does it? No. Uh, it is very unfortunate here for Swords. There are things he could do if he was just allowed, like, one extra mana. Give that mana save a rush. I think he's going to be dead to Viper's hand here, regardless of what he does. He does not know that. Rotner, Siamat effectively do most of the same job. Even the yep. trade into a faceless corruptor. Gets the job done a lot of the time because you save you save an attack that you can use to yep. face. See him at rush. Looks pretty spicy here. Wind Fury rush. Smash through. 12 to phase plus the hero power. You only need the 12. Welcome to the jam. Viper takes game number one with the hunter over the res priest from Swid. And again, we see an another clash of. The, the, the number four deck, right? Or, or like the top tier deck out of what the players have access to. And again, Hunter seems to come out on top. Yeah, the number seven deck, I guess, right? When you're playing... Sure, you sure. Play, you play deck seven, eight, nine, and ten in this format. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, but I, I think Swids clearly wasn't dealt the hand that game. I think he scrapped and clawed very effectively. I think that turn to set up the Soul Mirror was like pretty spicy. Um, obviously, when you, whenever Soul Mirror is a card in your deck that you choose to play in Res Priest, you do kind of concede your Res Pool as soon as you do that. But I just don't think Swids had a better solution to what was going on. And I mm -hmm. think the the two turn setup for the Soul Mirror was about the best hope he had. Um, but Viper's hand was just too chunky, just like threat after threat after threat, all the way up to uh, Raven's favorite card. I thought you were going to like faint out of joy to finally see that card getting cast and I'd have to handle the rest of the day solo, but thankfully you, you just about That would have been a good plan, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, I will say as well, though, that uh, the setups and, and even just the card itself, Soul Mirror, is cool, right? It's just a very cool card, but also the... I think you're okay with messing up your res pool a lot of the time because bear in mind, he is running Mana Sabers, right? So it's not like the deck is just the core taunts or nothing. Uh, deck that we see, but I do think the evasive Felwing, even though I love Nagrand Slam, the evasive Felwing just deserves the uh, MVP award in that game because there was just nothing you could do about it, right? So it's yeah. just had to look at it hitting him for five every turn and, and maybe shed a tear or so. So Viper getting a good win there overall uh, with his Hunter, but you know the, the questions do continue, right? Until we see the Paladin or Shaman get a win, 
the series is still up, up and open for any player to take it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think Swids with that Priest might um, have a lot of game against some of the decks that are left remaining. Um, but if this is anything to go by, it looks like he is going to be jamming his Spell Druid coming up now, which, uh, looking at it, there are zero copies of Bees in his deck, which I think is number one go-to tech card for the Druid in uh, in this metagame. Uh, Swids choosing not to play it, though. This looks very standard in sort of comparison to what we've been seeing in, in previous weeks. 22 Star Falls, which is yeah, not sure. uh, which is not super standard. Sure. So I, I feel like if you aren't running bees, Star Falls probably the next best thing. Is um, because it is more of a like all the other removal tools <laughs> don't Swids quite get god. the job done. Oh, it's hmm? Switz is an actual god. He's just cute druid twice, and he's got the mirror twice with double Starfall in his deck. It's good at the game, isn't it? What a guy. Yep. Yeah, I do, I do like Starfall overall. Like Bees is good, but there are some some matchups where it's definitely not quite as powerful. Whereas I feel like right now with what's left, Starfall always gets a good job done. Obviously, the trade-off is the mana slot because a lot of the time you don't want to be using five mana for Starfall when you could be Glowfly Swamp, for example. So it really did look like in the previous series, uh, Silvername just kind of conceded this match to Swids with zero Starfalls versus two. Uh, now Viper finds himself in exactly the same position. Zero Starfalls versus two, by which I mean by every definition possible. In deck, in hand, zero versus two. Small caveat, I do think the Kael'thas was a big deal. For that, for that, like, that was the thing that really stumped the game out, because yeah. Kael'thas was just left on board, which means it could do whatever he wants for the rest of the game. So we'll yep. see if, or we'll maybe see if the Glowfly Swarm in Viper's hand lines up to the Starfall and then see what happens when the game continues at a even pace, I guess. But the Central. idea being that Switz is running removal for things uh, that Viper doesn't have enough waves for. So I was curious, if this last card that Viper drew was going to be a spell, whether we might like see turbo glow flies here, even though it's only for a few of them. Just because that way you get way ahead of the Starfall being able to come down, but there's no payoff in his hand for that. There's no Soul of the Forest, Power of the Wild, any of the stuff that would help him play around Starfall anyway. So I think he's right, just to hold back, just so you don't have the Starfall instead. With no support card, it's not going to be good enough, but Swids just locks in the insta coin into Starfall. That's wave one done. And the problem as well is, even though Swids is running more removal, or at least the, the bigger, wider removal versus the bees from Viper, you would generally say, oh, well, then Viper has more threats. But Swids is running Ysera which, again, may not be the best card in the world for this deck, but it is a lot of awkward health threats to deal with if the game gets to that point. Yeah. So since that exchange, Firefly met Starfall, and then both players just hit the overgrowth button. Now here we are, and Viper actually has a chance to be the first one to develop a pretty significant board of threats here. Uh, a lot of the time are extremely uh, stuffle creatures. resistant. Get a lot yeah. of uh, four health things out of this mount cellar. And <sighs> jinx. Um, and and also staring at it. I'm, I'm interested there. I thought he was going to go a little bit more in uh, on on that and go a little bit wider because I thought he wasn't going to get too punished for it considering he has an overflow anyway. But I'm surprised he stopped there. Do you think it was uh, it was good for him to just? do a little bit, considering he had Crystal Power, he had an Innovate. Job's done. Uh, so what would he do? He would Crystal Power just for healing, and then potentially Innovate nothing. It's just, it's so awkward, right? Like, the way the hand breaks down. I think he's probably okay to, to wait there, because you think about what it demands from the opponent to be able to remove that. It's pretty outrageous, the combination of cards they have to have specifically to kill that. Right. Thing, right? Yeah, I, I guess... I was going a different route, saying, uh, thinking that if you make a big board awkward enough and big enough, you have a sort of freebie over overgrowth. Uh, oh, sorry, overflow turn next turn anyway, which mm. could maybe heal stuff up. But I think for me, it was the nothing, no good follow up if 
the Mount Cell's dealt with. It did require a lot, as you said, though, so maybe Viper was just banking on that the Mount Cell always lives that turn. Yeah, I think Viper's plan was this thing just always lives. Like, he's down a Starfall, and he needs second Starfall plus plus to be able to deal with it. Like, that's a pretty bad beating if that happens. Um, and then at that point, he could just make the big board and soul of the forest the turn after. And then he has, like, Overflow as kind of his last card as the refill the turn after that. Okay. Um, which to me looked like the best way to play the curve. Well, that was Well, here we go, Sol. It's going to be Ysira versus KT at the moment by looks things, as Viper does have Kel Pass in hand and a ton of spells to chuck out as a win. But that is a massive Ysira and also just the dragons in hand and not because none on of average his cards are, none of his spells in hand sorry are payoff cards though like he has a million spells but there's just nothing that he actually cares about casting oh yeah bees <laughs> okay sure yeah bees only he could aim his... yeah except he can't right because they all <laughs> no. he needs a zero attack minion to smash them all into yeah. and then soul of the forest them afterwards only he was playing against shaman right now can you bees your own minion no yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, can you? Oh, there we go. Problem solved. Ease that panther and then bees the bee. Are addicted to it. And then saw the forest. Easy peasy. Okay. Yeah, that was actually important sometimes in the, 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 the you know, the fancy OTK deck. The Zanana right. deck. The clear board space. Yeah. Too high an IQ required. Uh, the game actually stopped me crafting that deck. So. Okay. It made me pass an IQ test and I did not. Ugh. Wasn't it the best turn it considering? Just, it was just no payoff that turn. Yeah. Like, it was one of the most underwhelming Kael'thas turns I've ever seen. Yeah, you have KT, tons of cards that you can free cast. And you kind of got nothing. <laughs> this feels yeah. really bad, actually. Yeah. Overflow, I mean, is this the, uh, the Call of the Dragons going to happen here? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, Hello? Portals? Oh! Okay. He is leaving up the Kael'thas, though. Could he have killed it anyway? No. Couldn't, right? He didn't have a choice. He needed different cards from the Overflow, is what two, I'm saying. Two like, evasive yeah. worms in the draw, maybe? Sure, yeah, yeah. A one, I guess, would do the job. What?! <laughs> Hello? We need hand space for these dream cards, right? So I guess Iron Bark is getting played, even with uh, Kael'thas yeah. in hand. Kael'thas is nothing compared to your Sarah cards. Nightmare, Just gets nightmare. two zero mana spells back anyway! Viper's just gonna die next turn. Double nightmare plus ten damage, easy. All right, bog beam to make room. Fungal fortunes, looking for a like any board in a can. Okay, there we go. You found there we go. He can even get off the the gift as well, right? He can do pretty much anything he wants this turn. Yes. Except... Pretty sure he can get somewhat close to playing his whole hand this turn. Probably can't kill off these 100 health dragons, though. No. It's one thing he can't do. I imagine this has to be a Soul of the Forest turn as well. Scared of uh, Sarah Awakens, right? Yeah. So. It's not as if it's a one go at it. Got two goes. Like we said, Viper pretty much can play his whole hand if he wants. Yep. Which makes this doable. And this is, I'd say, going all in, but Viper doesn't have much of his deck even left. So <laughs> this is just the play, actually. Uh, he has to make the biggest, scariest board. Hope it sticks. Hope he can get through this Ysera. And hope he can end the game, if not, the sheer value that Switz is going to have. There's the, uh, the worm. Yes, indeed. Another turn that was potentially roped out, uh, Kael'thas turn from Viper's side. Um, I'm not going to go in on that at all, though. I think Viper had a very allowable amount of thinking time, and that turn was impossible. So I think I'm, I'll forgive him the potential to have maybe got a couple more spells in there. 
So like and you, you came out to... of it with the, the right things being done, right? Yes, 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 yes. And I, I don't think it's like... It's not like you wanted to play Overflow there anyway, right? There's only two cards left in his deck, yeah. so... Or Bs. <laughs> yeah. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, weird game of Hearthstone. Does, can Swiss even get through this? And if he can't... And if he can't taunt up... Oh. oh, wait. Yeah, he can just Nightmare. What am I talking about? He makes the biggest taunt in the world. Mm-hmm. His Nightmare also gives him another spell proc off the Kael'thas, because, you know, synergy is sweet. <laughs> Piper's just like... What is this? Ooh. Oh, a base of Draconid as well. Well... Twids did not okay. finish that turn, did he? Yeah, this one, on the other hand, I'm going to yeah. be a little bit harsher on, because there was definitely still some stuff that needed doing this turn. But again, the turn was impossible. So, fine. He made space for the Ysera cards, though, which is pretty key. Uh, he got a Ysera Awakens, which is huge. But also, yep. the Nightmare carries on until the next turn, which means this is 22 health. He has to not only hit through, but also the 15 attack kills all of his minions, or at least the first wave. Indeed. Is this just is this just done? Are we just done dusted with this game, Saul? Because this seems impossible, as far as I can see, for Viper. Right, even not looking at Switch's hand seems tough. Yeah, I think he has to just sit on this board, right? Yeah, he can't trade, can he? He actually only loses out if he trades. I was going to say, there's no point in playing Forest Aids for two Triants when you have a Rising I mean, I guess there's an argument because it's a much more expensive card. Like, it takes up your whole turn, essentially, to play it, but sure. Sarah's going to go down. Viper's shaking his head. So... Trade. Like if Swits can clear here, then that is pretty much just game over. And he... Get close, right? Trade Ysera Awakens leaves three tokens up. He has two attacks that kill those tokens, and he has Hero Power Moonfire to kill the last token. So yep. that looks like he can to me. Yeah, work it out. And he still has more stuff where that came from, so. Just gotta work out Audrin for just a second. You could also second. just. Sorry, just Mount Seller here instead of the Hero Power, which I think is stronger, because this way. He knows the only remaining threats he has left to deal with are just Forest Aids. So he just can't be in a position where Viper can play Forest Aid. So I think getting another big bomb threat in play is the best way to do that. I was wondering if he... Creatures. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like guess it doesn't matter. I was wondering whether... Oh! Me not counting the spells. I was wondering whether he was going to go Overflow. Um, I forgot he was actually one spell in before he cast the Moonfire, so he yeah, could yeah, overflow yeah. anyway. So, anyway, it made all the sense in the world, and Swids take, uh, takes the game there. And honestly, pretty heavily off the back of the, the Ysera, summoning more Yseras. But yeah, it was a tough one. He had the answers, though. I will say the Starfall got him to that point. So the tech card's there for Swids, getting him there. If he didn't have the Starfall, Viper made the first board, and without any form of AoE removal from either, either side, the person who makes the first board normally wins. So yeah, he, uh, although the Ysera looked like the flashy part of that game, the Starfall for me was the, was the, doing the big job. Yeah, certainly. And the, the second one as much as the first one, right? Like, the first yes. one looked amazing because it just, you know, lined up so perfectly, nuked the Glowfly. But then the second one just being used as five damage to take care of the Kael'th. Oh, uh, was it Mount Cellar or Kael'th? It was Mount, Mount Cellar, Mount right? Cellar, Mount Cellar. Um, taking care of the Mount Cellar that Viper just dropped, you know, for, for little value, thinking, ah, there's no way this thing dies this turn. Well, yes, there was a way. Exactly second Starfall plus two other removal spells on top of that as well. Very unlikely hand for Swids to have had, but it's the one that he did. Yeah, and that makes it all even one and one so far. Swids stars that Priest, but just a reminder, you do not have to win with every single one of your decks. You have to win with three of them, which means Swids doesn't like the way that, you know, whatever decks are left for Viper up, he doesn't have to play the Priest again, or he can queue it again if he wants, but he still has his Paladin and Shaman to lock in if he wants to. Viper, on the other hand, has his Druid, Shaman, Paladin, basically the three classes we should see every single match of this weekend, at least as far as their uh, uh, historic uh, picks and bands have been going.
Yes, Druid certainly does seem to be deck number eight if we're going to continue with that parlance, which I think we shouldn't because it's horribly confusing, so I don't know why I'm doing it. Uh, it seems to be the one deck outside of Shaman and Paladin victory. that does seem to be consistently being left up by people. Um, people disagree much, much more on what the fourth deck left up should be. Um, and of course, if you are just joining us, the dynamic has kind of switched um, because this is a 10-deck format, so players build classes for all 10 uh, current classes in the game, including Demon Hunter, of course. And then, essentially, your opponent gets to pick what you play, because they ban six classes uh, blind and then leave you with four. So they get to choose which four classes in Hearthstone you get to play the series with. That's why we are seeing the quote-unquote bad decks going head-to-head -head hmm. against each other. Yep, and why you'll have a little bit of a break from Demon Hunter, Rogue. Warrior. <laughs> three of uh, probably just the top three classes in the game right now. Without much discord. It'll be a nice slow start, but I will say for this one, Swids has not only the Mana Saber, but the Psycho Pump and Kartuk Defender as well. So, mm -hmm. does have the, the thing you want <laughs> with this deck. An early minion that you actually want to resurrect, and a way to resurrect it. Yeah, I wonder how important Mana Saber versus like one of the big taunts is in this matchup in particular. Because convincing infiltrators are still quite strong against Druid, I would say. It does still like, you know, cut down a few attacks just into the minion itself and then one more attack goes away because, you know, a minion dies. Can represent a pretty huge wall in the matchup. Yeah. I think funnily enough, it's it's like Mana Saber looks like a bad resurrect. But it gets him to the Kartuk Defender this turn, which then means that Kartuk Defender is more likely to die, which then means the Psycho Pump will definitely res Kartuk. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? That the Mana Saber is actually enabling the taunts to be resed more often. Sure. I wonder. I wonder whether he might even just keep it concealed this turn and curve out, just because of how entirely unimportant three damage to face against Druid is right now when you're playing Res Priest. You are right in that dropping Kartu Defender here does seem kind of exciting, but yeah, I kind of like this, honestly. I don't want to give my opponent any opportunity to interact with this Mana Saber in case I actually need it for a, like a clutch Plague of Death, a clutch Mass Res later in the game, right? Oh yeah, and I'm never going to complain if you tell me that instead of putting a 3-4 on the board, you put a 5-5. Five five. Uh, that seems yeah. pretty, pretty good to me, so... This one's bigger, Raven. Exactly, but these are bees. It doesn't matter how big you are. Everyone runs away from bees. Well, unless you have more than four health. <laughs> well, as a human, I do not have more than four health. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I've been stung by a bee in a total of once in my life, and I never want to repeat it. And the saber is still there and protected. It does mean Swids can just psycho pump, drop down a another five five. And it's inter this is where I, I am really interested now, Sol, because a 5-5 five five that heals and has reborn is a very, very strong minion. Mm -hmm. Do Swids want to get this car to in the pool? The drawback? I guess it's not a drawback. He doesn't have to attack with a mana saber. Hmm. The drawback is that Viper just put a 4-5 on the board, which is well, extremely mm. icky to be playing your um, car to defender into. I was then looking if you just forbidden words and pass this turn. Yeah. Definitely an option. Forbidden Words is, I think, too big of an answer to like one of the bomb cards, though, right? Like Kaldas or, or Mount Seller. Hmm. Yeah, most of the I time, think... Druid, Druid I... players will be smart enough not to buff them and just leave them in their, their four attack form, so it's as difficult as possible for Druid to deal with. That's true. I think that could be hard to do, though, as well, right? It can, yeah. Uh, to not buff them. So, but I will say, I think the... KT is covered with the death more often than not. But yeah, the mount cells can be a nightmare. Hmm, I wonder. So while we have a, uh, a bit of a lull here, just an update on this, what's at stake in this final week of Swiss proceedings. Uh, a lot of these players that you are seeing today 
are still fighting it out for potential uh, Group A seeding when we go into Round Robin. Uh, sorry, Division A seeding as we go into Round Robin, um, which gives them all kinds of privileges, like no automatic relegation slots, more playoff slots available. It's essentially just the place you want to be. Uh, Swids is guaranteed to be in that division already, uh, whereas Viper is still scrapping for that spot and needs to get top two, needs to make the finals of this week. He's going to guarantee that spot. Otherwise, it comes down to all kinds of caveats and tiebreakers, which we will get into more. Yeah, and if you were a fan of Hearthstakes, Hearthstone, and also just seeing the players, I don't want to say this, but seeing the players stressing out about their placements, imagine what it's going to be like next week when Round Robin actually starts and relegation is on the line for these players. Three spots per region. It happened. Bees into Soul of the Forest. He actually did it. Yes. Oh, God. This thing is a house. Skeletal Dragon? Mm. Oh. This is a house of a Hearthstone card. One absolute unit, Raven. I knew you were going to say unit. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I was like, I was all surprised you didn't call it a unit. I was like, he's going to. He's going to. Just wait, wait, wait for it. There it is. Set my watch by that. Yeah. And this is where the game gets really tricky and where I feel like a lot of it is leaned towards Viper's side in terms of not even being favoured, but he has to make sure he has the ability to hit through awkward taunt minions positively almost every turn for the rest of the game. If he sees like one more resurrect, He's doing a good job now because this eagle as a 6-9 is insane. Oh, but now there's the convincing infiltrator from Swids. So he could just play it and death the eagle. He could. Again, death is premium spot removal from cards that are a lot scarier than that eagle. But it does look like a pretty strong turn. Stretches out his Plague of Death resources for quite some time. So otherwise, and he the, might just be looking at the ramp turn into the Plague of Death to deal with the yeah. Soul of the Forest. I was going to say that. It's, it's tough, isn't it? Because I will just check. I think Viper is running the one Soul of the Forest. So you could just Plague now and say, mm. that Soul of the Forest, gone. Done. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest fear factor in terms of the board sticking around. Yeah. I think but the I problem is that, that Viper Plague. just ripped Overflow on the previous turn, though. Yeah. So you just know he's going to have a big refill here. So I think you just get stuck back in the same position if you do that. Do, do you but ever get this Primordial down instead with, with Infiltrator? Uh, oh, Convincing and the Poison Dragon? Yeah. Maybe. I'm just thinking of like really stretching the resources out. You can use this to trade and heal it back up. It does reveal it, but most importantly, Swids is on Plague Mana next turn anyway. Exactly. Like, he played a Mana Saber on 4, essentially just to say, this is my emergency button. If I ever just need to break glass and rip a Plague of Death, I can do it. Now that he's got there, he just doesn't really need it anymore. Mm. Imagine if you walked into a building and there was a breaking case for emergency and there's just a Mana Saber in a box. Yeah. You'd be like, I wonder... Well, I mean, break in case of emergency and there's just a Plague of Death in a box? That, that, <laughs> sounds, even, that sounds even more confusing. It's like... Explain to me the nature of this emergency that <laughs> yeah. requires a plague of death to solve. Yeah. It's going to be a hard sell, that one, isn't it? Hmm. And this is where all the woes happen. How, when, and why do you deal with a convincing infiltrator? Yes. And there, this is the reason why I like this turn over ripping the plague of death is that it just makes life so awkward for Viper. Like, he can't not develop, because his board's not strong enough to deal with Mass Resurrection or just other big minions being played. So he has to develop. But you don't want to develop, because you haven't seen Plague of Death yet. So you're just kind of stuck in this, like, awful Catch-22 that Priest is, is so good at putting you in. Yep. And as is often the case, one thing you do, or can do, that can be effective against targets with random hard removal, is go so wide that you aren't often too heavily punished by that hard removal. We did just lose a B there. If Swid's Plague of Deaths, 
again. He's going to be sat there thinking, ah, can I get, it, get away with not Plague of Death in this turn? The issue he has, if he does that, I think he has to commit to the Forbidden Word to kill off the Mount, so... He's going to go for it now. That board was just probably a little bit too scary overall. I was looking at, though, convincing Infiltrate number two, and then Forbidden Words, the Mount Cellar, and just cross your fingers. Uh, he doesn't have mana for that, does he? The Mount Cellar's a 5-8, so you'd only have four mana left after the Convincing Oh, he's on nine, not ten. Apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason... So you used to looking at Druid mana, so I'll Oh wait, no, no, because he had he had a mana saber that he just didn't attack with because he was plague of deathing anyway. So he could have oh, got okay, the one. Yeah. He could have got the one more from the mana saber. Told you I guess, I and right. it still works. Yeah. Hmm. The only problem is if if Viper like buffs and pushes through the infiltrator pretty easily, then yeah, the board is still wide enough to be a threat, which then would still need a plague of death follow up. Agreed. So, it's it's, it's too much. Just, it's just too much damage. It. Yeah. Against, like, Savage Aurora, Gift of the Wild or something, I think it's too much damage to risk taking. Hmm. Like, you're one Plague of Death. You're one Plague of Death down, and you've already got through one Mount Cellar, one Glowfly, one Soul of the Forest. Pretty good outcome, Seems fine. Seems fine. Oh, no, it was a Bees, wasn't it? It wasn't even a, a Glowfly. Never mind. The end. Res Res Penance seems pretty straightforward this turn. Ooh, nice. Big outcomes for Swids for sure. Skeletal Dragon was probably the nuts, but Convincing is not too far behind. Mm -hmm. And also to a certain extent, they seem pretty equal as well, because it, even if there's a big buff, well, the Skeletal Dragon has more health, well, Infiltrator just insta-kills something else, that, you know, that has to go through it first, so... Well, I mean, Skeletal Dragon also has more attack, which is the more irrelevant thing, because right now, Convincing Infiltrator gets value traded by everything. Sure, oh. sure, sure. That's true. Hmm. It's tough, though, because as is often the case with Druid, they've drawn through a lot of their deck. So it's on a cool 17 versus a Viper's spicy 2. I know, it's so um, dumb. <laughs> How does this deck do so much with so few cards? Like, yeah. they draw zero cards. Yeah, so feel the anger. <laughs> Bathe in the hatred. Let yeah. the hate flow through you. Yeah. Wait, how have you become, like, the Palpatine in this scenario? What's happened <laughs> Because here? it's Priest, so... <laughs> okay. Viper looks thoroughly fed up with this game of Hearthstone. Don't blame him. Oh. Well, will, will that actually just do it based on what we can see? Uh, he's still got like forest days to get through. Yeah, yeah. He's, still, he's still got about 800 Carta defenders to get through as well, though. Yeah, I don't think you even do it here, though, do you? Like, you're just actually ahead of the board. You're a little scared of Gift of the Wild, but even then you've got one Poisonous Minion and one Death Rattle Killer Minion that's going to take care of a lot of that. You've seen just... most of the removal for the Primordial Explorer already, so it's likely to land. Consider... Yeah, because right now, Viper only has symmetrical buffs, doesn't he? Left. So the soul will always clear the board. Symmetrical. Well, all of it's plus one symmetrical, apart from Savage Roar, right? They're all symmetrical. Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, for example, like, you can't mount Cellar a board. Gone. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha. you can't make, like, a board that might live through a soul mirror and then he gets lethal. You know what I mean? Like, everything will always, for the rest of the game, be equal health and attack, which means that the soul mirror can clear the big boards. Sure. He's not going to be scared of a weird mount Cellar board and then, like, Savage Roar return swing. Yeah, there's that other Glowfly Swarm, which is yeah. probably the big deal right now. I mistakenly remembered the first board as a Glowfly, but it wasn't. It was bees. Hmm. You know what I'd love for someone to do with it in Hearthstone? Delete Priest? Mate. Okay. You know what else I'd love someone to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, like a to scale image. You know, when you see like dinosaurs and planes and stuff, uh-huh. where yeah, you, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a person size, and then the yeah. the thing, that yeah. but with the minions in Hearthstone. Because how big are these flies? If these right. glow flies are the size of a house fly, they're not that yeah. scary, are they? If they're the yeah. size of a house. Wow, good card. You know what I mean? Down. Down. That'll be pretty cool. Like, there you go, like Had, Had, Hadija and I graphics and visual effects know. departments. Get on it. There's some content for you. Look at this dragon. It's a 2 3. It's a dragon. How small can it be? Bowfly Swarm, number two. Oh, it just doesn't matter oh. anymore, does it? Yeah, he's got him covered. Like even if you do, if he doesn't see fit to react to this board this turn with one of the removals, he just he just has Viper covered now. He just has the tools that he needs he, to get the he job could done. Car to trade, trade, heal, and he's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Even use his turn to drop the evasive worm. He's gonna take the clear with the soul mirror. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to rhyme to follow me up. I guess why not? Because if there's any bigger board, you can just snap plague with this. Is, I, I, I'm stretching, but like this is just a guaranteed play. Mm-hmm. And then anything else, well, plague is always a guaranteed play now, no matter what's played. So seems good. We can see, though, that Viper's just not got this stuff. Last card is Chaos. <laughs> Typical. So now Viper, yeah, roars to clear this, and then innovates, plays Kael'thas, plays his hand, generates a huge board. This is for sure the right play, um, but Swids is just going to hit it with the Plague of Death, and GG. Yep, good recognition, honestly, even at, at this point in the game, Viper is making extremely solid plays, but we can see that it's not oh, never mind. <laughs> a slap in the face, isn't it? <laughs> the Breath of the Infinite, there's still a Plague of Death, and 14 more cards where that came from, whereas Viper's deck has run out. That's a concede, and Swids taking the win on the Priest, not only good for Swids, but good for us, as we don't have to cast another game of Priest uh, for at least a little while. The, the views of Raven do not reflect the views of Sotl. Sotl purely hates Mage. <laughs> yes, so one day, we'll just sit down to cast and be like, we just hate all the classes <laughs> like yeah, yeah. when we're like 80 years old or something we're like wait what's going on between us do we just have it covered do we all just have a pet hatred for one deck and we that's just all 10 of them yeah probably that's probably true but swids yeah. going up two and one now over viper means he's only got one more game to win but this is it Sol. the one game has to be either shaman or paladin this is the test the other two decks and the two better decks in general have got their wins, but it's down to this. Can Viper fight back? He has his Druid that we've seen, but also his Shaman and Paladin too. It's a bit of, a, believe it or not, an ongoing theme that Shaman and Paladin knocking around if you've just tuned in. But it's going to be a tough one, right? Because at this point in a matchup when both players have similar decks, you've just got to say the person who's 2-1 two, two up has, has an advantage here. Sure. Um, the big question is potentially, yes, beautiful timing, as always, Abar. Thank you so much. Is... How this Shaman deck stacks up against, for example, Token Druid. Is Hagatha's scheme good enough to be able to, you know, deal with a couple of board states? If he gets off to an aggressive start like he did against the Mage, like that plus the backup of a couple of AoEs, is that good enough to deal with Druid? My suspicion is no, but I would be interested to find out, I guess. Um, so yeah, this, this deck is just a real, real X factor in proceedings. Uh, and it does look like Swids is choosing to cue this um, and Viper is choosing to stick on that Druid. So here we go again. Yep, let's find out. This Galakrond Shaman going to be a game here for Swids versus Viper's Druid. I will say as well that there is a lot of a discover potential in terms of spells with this deck. So it means that you know he could maybe get Earthquakes, which are very good versus Druid, mm. uh, and some other ways to clear the board. The AoE exists in Shaman, just not necessarily in this deck specifically. Keeping also, Marsh Spawn. Okay. Do you think he? Do you think he might be able to actually muscle out the druid if he had? Okay, bit of a better earlier curve than this. Like just curve out, hit him in the face, kill him. Is that yeah, what just saying? just play stuff. Yeah, as, like I said, I think if he got a similar curve to what he got against mm. the mage, then maybe that's a better plan than like AOEing down all his stuff. But we'll see. 
coin serpent shrine portal him in the face and then play Marshborn the next turn? Uh, he'll a, be that's overloaded. A, that's a curve. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right. Stupid. That's not a curve. <laughs> not a curve. Yeah. Could could he coin Marshborn anyway and then <laughs> get that aggro play going? Well, I was curious about why he was keeping Marshborn. About whether like maybe it was just a spider tank and he was gonna like play it and start hitting him with it, but. I guess not. Guess it does. I guess it gets farmed by bees. It does. Good point. But he did keep it. Yep, he did. Maybe he just, again, touched on what I said earlier. Maybe he's just like, well, this is a way to discover a spell. Shamans have a lot of spells that are AoE. Mm. Do I just want, want this at some point, right? Viper, no ramp in hand. No strong plays here, just gonna wrath for one, get draw, and hey, what do you know? Doing some ramp? So now, oh, so so now, now yeah, yeah, yeah. coin devoted maniac into oh. Surging Tempest and then Master Ball? Yeah. Does make sense, right? Yep. Can we just double check devoted maniac doesn't overload you? No, no, okay, we're good. <laughs> Imagine. I just was like, devoted maniac overloads you. Really? <laughs> How have I not noticed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but only if you're a shaman. Yeah. I mean, it did, certainly did feel that way when, like, Galakron was first released, and, like, Shaman was just like, yes, I'm the good Galakron deck. Mm. Like, all yeah. of the cards are better when they're in Shaman. Did feel like it would have been fair if all the Galakron cards just overloaded Shaman for <laughs> one specifically. That would be funny, wouldn't it? I guess it would be a way that they could have, uh, you know, balanced out different strengths of Invoke. That was always the big deal, right? The uh, the invoke creating tempo on board was so much yeah. bigger than generating value Ooh. because you, value doesn't matter if you're dead. I There's am no maniac. longer interested in this marsh spawn. Not even a little bit. You want a, a couple of doggos soon instead? I want a big old dragon's pack. This is a problem now because not only can we see dragon's packs in hand and ready to go but the board itself is well there's no swipe in the list right so the board no. itself is actually very competitive even though it looks very weak as a board in isolation against druid and and viper's hand it looks pretty good these glow flies just getting killed is he gonna can't bog beam these right i think viper needs to seriously consider playing quite a few cards in his hand this turn I guess Rising Wind can help refill. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like wow. This. I like this. Yeah, I, this makes I, sense. I don't like this, as in, if I was Viper, this would pain me a little bit, but mm. I do think it's correct, because he can't just... His Glowflies can't just be farmed by <laughs> some bad minions yeah, on exactly, board, yeah. right? Like, you can't let your opponent just smack four of your Glowflies and then just, like, play <laughs> Dragon's Pack. Like, that's just not a good turn for you. When they were five sixes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Ooh, degenerate, degenerate that I am. I actually, I really enjoyed OP Galakron Shaman. That is a good pickup. Is it better than Gift? I wonder. Uh, maybe. Do you think there's a chance, if you're in Viper's shoes, that uh, Swids is, like, baiting the Hagathus scheme right now? Or do you think he doesn't have it, based well, on this board being alive? I'm working out if there's, like, a weird bees play here. So, like, trade, trade, bees into the one health, and then soul the forest. Then trade, trade, trade. Or innovate hero power for the last point. Keep one more minion. Am I talking rubbish here, Sol? <laughs> not sure. I think I'm. I, I think I'm. I'm going down a rabbit hole that's a bit too deep. So I mean, the the first step, like trade, trade, and then play bees on the one remaining health. That does gain you a minion. So that is a logical thing that you can do. I did lose track after that when you just started saying the word so, trade. So soul, soul exactly. trade, trade. Oh, okay. You know what? I didn't even look at the bug beam. Okay. So that's why I missed the bug beam, but then said trade, trade, innovate hero power to do the last point. Okay, yeah, that didn't make any sense. But the the first part was was on point. Uh, good, good I'll job. take a fifty percent. You get a okay. solid C plus. 
<laughs> you know what? Welcome to my life, soul. <laughs> That was a good turn for Viper. All, all jokes aside, what looked <laughs> like a very troublesome setup from Swids for Viper. Yeah. He, he has turned this around. It's cost him a lot of cards. But who needs cards when you're winning? That famous phrase. It's a great point. Never in Hearthstone history have <laughs> I smashed my opponent in the face until they died and suddenly had the thought, wow, I really wish I had more Such cards in my hand. choices. Mm -hmm. Shield of... Alacrond could just progress Swids a little bit uh, for his invokes, of course, and summon a 2-1 to trade off with this Treant. Makes the board a little bit smaller. Is anything else he got really much better? I think he wants this Galakron down ASAP, and then he wants Kronks down ASAP. Marshborn seems like a risk, even though he, he has the... mousing uh, over Marshborn, but yeah, I'm really not clear on Ugh. what the thing he's looking for off this is because like it's not like lightning storm's good here right mm. so now he's overloaded so now he only has six mana again next turn yeah i think he might have had to just go for it then get the shield of galakron in the way trade off a minion and then get galakron even if galakron doesn't get to the four just get it down to start having like rush minions on board and some armor and a hero power yeah, that he is went... very good versus druid yeah if he went shield into Galakron, that would be three invokes. Yeah. But the, hmm. It's not about getting the shield down, it's about playing a turn that doesn't overload you, so Galakron yes. is even possible, right? And the 4 5 taunt and the 2 1 killing a minion? It's not the worst outcome, right? Yeah. Yeah, board stay on Viper's side would be the same. You don't Serpent Shrine the 2 2, you just smack him hmm. with the 2 1 instead. Mm hmm. You'd have a 4-5 instead of these minions, and you'd have mana to play Galakron next turn, and then play Kronks the turn after. Again, like, but... ugh, you're just not breaking into the soul of the forest with all of that is the problem. Like, I guess you are a little bit. And you've got the hero power as well, remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like, oh, he'll just win if he does this, right? It's definitely tough. No, no, no. As we've seen a ton of damage coming now from Viper, but I felt like it was actually a game plan as opposed to rolling a few dice based on Marsh Spawn and then Serpent Trine Cavern. Uh, Serpent Trine Paul. Serpent Trine Cavern is the WoW Raid. Never mind. <laughs> Law's getting to me today. Sorry, is his turn just the same now but way worse? Is the problem, right? Oh, wow. It's going to be the concede. It was too much there for Swids to handle, and the, deck, the Shaman deck just did not get there. But I will say, Sotl, I uh, or we maybe, did kind of expect this outcome. For me, I felt like the Druid was going to get a win very soon for Viper, and it's more about, again, it coming down to the Shamans and Paladins. Who's going to get the win with one of those first is going to be the victor. Sometimes we've seen uh, players lock in Paladin or Shaman game one, Sometimes we're going to see it come down to literally the last game of the series, like now. Yeah, it didn't just... Obviously, I don't have a ton of experience with that list because it's you know fairly unique. I've seen builds like it running around on ladder more like early in the expansion than recently, but um, just looking at the list, it didn't feel like it was going to be mm -hmm. aggressive enough to beat through all the healing, nor did it feel like it was going to have answers to enough stuff that Druid did. Like Even if there was an opening hand scheme, eh? Like, you know, you deal with one right. board, and if it was a Soul of the Forest board, you don't even do that. Um, so, yeah, it just it didn't really seem like that Shaman was going to get the job done to me. But we are now moving on. It looks like Viper is going for this Highlander Paladin, um, which I don't know about you, Raven, but I am a big fan of when th faced with the, uh, the task of building a Paladin deck for this tournament. I'm a big fan of the players who have gone Highlander Paladin as opposed to Murloc Paladin. Yes, I think for me... The main, not, I think Murloc Paladin is fine as a deck. It's not great, but it's <laughs> no, fine. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's just not. Come on. My pro my problem is, it is way more counterable than a Highlander list. And when your opponent knows you're going to be playing one of the two, almost certainly, then I just want to play the Highlander list anyway. And also you get to play good cards in the deck. It's Highlander, right? Yes. 
Yes, now it's going to be deciding the Paladin versus the Shaman. And this opening hand is pretty good for Viper because there is a, a little Murloc called Sir Finley of the Sands in there. Ooh, and carpet as buffed well. hero powers are insane. They are carpet not as important as maybe my reaction betrays there. Obviously, we've been testing a bunch of Paladin versus a bunch of Shaman. Not this one from Swids. Uh, the other Shaman's being much, much more board focused than this one seems to be. Uh, so Magic Carpet is a much bigger draw in that case, but yeah, probably not as impactful as it might be, but still a very, very strong card. Whoa, really? Wow. Really? Alts and Demon Hunter. Viper gets Demon Hunter, I want him to oh. coin it out. Coin it out? <laughs> yeah. Assert <laughs> dominance. Straight away. Sorry, I've only just processed the information. I just saw not Demon Hunter and then stopped caring, but actually when you look at it, all three of these are pretty trash, right? He wanted mm. a board focused one, I would imagine. I think Daggers, Paladin. Yeah, I think Shapeshift is, is the overall choice, right? Seems like Seems it, the yep. most flexible. Yep. Wow, big turn here from Swids. Sorry, can we talk more about bolting that 2-1? Because is that really the thing to do? If Swids has not looked at the deck list, maybe he could think it's Agro Paladin, but I'm pretty sure he has. Uh, I guess I, I, I didn't if he was the going to overload, he had to do it that turn, right? Because he wants to start curving out. So he couldn't overload this oh, turn, wonder. for example, by like lightning bolting a 2-3 or a bigger minion or whatever, because then he can't play Devoted Maniac on 4. Could have played a marsh spawn though. I guess that seemed that valuable enough. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. He's got scheme in hand already, so he's got a, a fairly consistent board wipe on turn five. Yeah. Feels like an unfun game so far for Swids. It does. His, his turns do not achieve much. He can kill Finley, but so what? Finley's already done more than his job. <sighs> he does pro inv invoke, which he, they can invoke again next turn with the Shield of Galakrond, so he is at least making a game plan where he's walking towards that Galakrond. But he has to draw it first, whereas we can see Viper's hand, although not mind blowing. Just the fact he's got that hero power puts Swids on a bit of a threat level, right? I was also wondering about Hex the Carpet. Is that a legal Hearthstone play that turn? Oh, not a bad draw. Actually pretty good. You go wide enough to be threatening into turn 5. But is Switch really going to scheme that? I wonder. Maybe. I mean, you can drop Argent Squire alongside it as well, or like, if you, if you want, you can just completely play around scheme. You can just start like shot bot Squire that turn and just build a board where um, where scheme basically does nothing. Snap shield there gets to clean up the carpet. I don't feel like Switch is a way away. He does have this emergency Hagatha scheme. But Viper's not exactly over. It's not like Viper's playing an aggro deck, right? Where you scheme the big board away and then you've won. Because you just stabilize after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viper's actually playing Highlander, although it looks like an aggro deck right now with the way he's drawn. Uh, he is he has got a lot of value there. And there's the scheme going down. Viper's got a nice big dragon to follow up if he really wants. I'm curious just as to whether, things. sorry, Viper could have used the 2-3 to trade there to preserve his Reborn minion. It's a bit less power on board, obviously, but you have the Reborn guy against Scheme. Interesting, just a slightly different way to trade it down to play around certain things. Yeah, I, I ooh, good draw there from Swid. I do wonder if he just didn't care if he got Schemed. Right, <laughs> I think that's valid. I, yeah, I do yeah. think that's valid.
I think it looks like Such it's a choice. turn to play Krunks as any. Got two other options. He has Marsh Spawn and Mana Tide, which again would generate him a lot of cards, not only generate him a spell, but draw an extra card. Hex doesn't feel great just because it's so much mana this turn, although he could kill off the dragon and still develop one of the three hmm. drops. But I feel like the board looks quiet for Swids. So using this turn to play Kronks that does threaten the board, looks good enough to me. Just get that Galakrond in hand. I kind of like the Hex this turn, but I've been liking Hex for a while, so clearly my head is in a very different place than Swids's, and since this is his deck, and I admittedly have not put much testing time into this deck, I'm going to just hope that he knows what he's doing, and I don't. Value Waste Warden. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that okay. is a draw. Double the power, double the storm. Yeah, Viper knows that's a draw as well. That is three and four. Why does this card take so long? And problem with Viper running Highlander Paladin is there aren't many answers to this big Galakron turn. He is currently running... Uh, he currently has no answers in hand. The Coin Alex Straza is a half answer, I guess. If you make a big enough board, then the 8-8s die. Unfortunately mm. for him, his two dragons he gets are a 3 and 4 attack minion, which kind of yep. sucks. He does get some one-mana spells, so secrets, um, humility. Not that he could cast it now, but... Could get some good options to help him deal with this oh, Galakron next turn. Or, or the, the elementals from Galakron, should I say? To be accurate. So I definitely don't think the Malagos is getting played. Because if the Malagos gets played, an 8 8 and the claw goes into it, and you don't want Swids getting any claw value, right? You want to ooze the claw before he yeah. gets any value out of it. Spellkin, I think, is potentially. It's but the same oh, argument though, quickly. right? Like it's just a target for the claw to smack. I, I think it, if he claws I guess you're the four... three five, you're pretty happy though, right? Uh, I mean, I don't want him to claw anything when I have an ooze in my hand. But then he would potentially claw the four six, right? Sure. So okay. I feel like if you're playing no one, I think you should play. I'm happier with this. I think if you're playing either of them, you have to play both. Ooh. I'll switch my one him to ooze. He has the fist. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point. And spells. This setup from Viper, although it's cost him his Alex Straza, it has heavily nullified the, the general power level of this Galakron turn, right? Mm -hmm. He's a swing down to the claw, his oh, elemental so is uh, dead, no matter what, right? Because he can trade in his. Uh, well, not no matter what, he could trade the other way, and then the uh, Spellkin doesn't actually kill the elemental, which is a consideration. Yep, yeah, gonna do it. But uh, but it's a lot weaker, right? Like there's just an eight five on the board and a weapon that you're going to destroy anyway. So Vipers yep. got himself in a reasonable spot. The hand of a doll is a nice pickup. Plus two, plus two, and a card draw. But the other spell, the spells he got weren't fantastic, were they? The eye for an eye and a blessing of might. Not mind blowing, considering even a secret oh, would be pretty wonder. solid right now. He got a secret. What are you talking about? Okay, sorry. The, a secret that is an eye secret. for an eye. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, good one. Does he ever go set up face here? Play all the Murlocs, hero power? 
and the ooze mm. oh, face in the next turn he has blessed the might. Let the elemental trade. Is this 8-5? It's not a threat to Viper's life, is it? No. He's kind of chilling right now. And his hand, all that says to me is smoke. That looks like a Murloc pounding hand to me, so i I have been, like, in my silence this turn, I have been very heavily considering to put Blessing of Might on your guy, play some stuff, and go face this turn. Wow. Hmm. But try as I might, I couldn't quite resolve it into something that won the game because I think the the trade down was just too easy for Swids to make, um, and just based on a lot of the stuff that Viper hasn't seen so far, like if that one big minion that you make with a blessing of might like just gets hexed, for example, that's kind of a disaster for you, and your push gets shut down. Um, so yeah, I kind of like this. I think just playing for board and sticking a board again is probably the most responsible thing to do. Okay. I didn't want still... to go face. That's <laughs> the important thing. Mm -hmm. There is still Tyrion, Siamat, Pharaoh's Blessing, a uh, Zephyrus. These are like the key uh, big cards. There's True Silver Champion as well in the list. So there is damage available. There is not, however, a Murglebot Prime. However, there is a 4 mana 8 8 on Swids' side of the board. That's a good one, isn't it? Noz Dormu the Timeless. Making a bit of a name for himself in GM this year. His old Nozzy. Mm. Now, the real question. Is Viper going to leave the 8-8, not play the Tyrion, and let Swid smack himself for 8 this turn? <laughs> <laughs> Big brain plays. I mean, look, sometimes you got to go outside the box. Yeah. Choosing to believe Viper's considering it, even though he's almost certainly not. Put your faith in the light. Now Viper's got Ashbringer. no option left but to show up, right? Yep. Yep. This Ashbringer's gonna deal seven, to be fair. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, it's done. Sure about that? Oh, 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 oh come on! Scammed. A four drop legendary is just insane. I need to look at the. I mean, the list. yeah, can you think of any bad ones, I guess? Attend me. Uh, the, uh, oh, the, what's the, the shaman one? Is that arguably bad if you're not overloaded, I suppose? Mm, I guess so. Mayev? Too bad? Yeah, sure. Switch just. Demolishing here? Rock buyer, let's go. Certainly looks that way. It's gonna be bad news for Viper as well. Doesn't mean he's out, as this is the upper bracket match, but I think Viper would have really liked to just win this match and call it a day. The storm approaches. There's a few Altruis, Grand Lucky Earth. There's a couple of pretty bad ones. My Earth, as you said. Scargill. Yeah. It's what, like... Oh, I was just going to say, this like, what, has to be Zephyrus? Oh. The problem is, if Viper plays Zephyrus and has to nether, all it is is losing him the game slower. Yeah. Let me think. Okay. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hmm. Hero power face? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm lost already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he can win if he gets, like, Pyro from Zephyrus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the god play. Uh, what, what's happening? Hero power face. Somehow hope Zephyrus offers you Pyroblast for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Even though your and opponent's then, at 12, yeah. Uh, eye for an eye, my friend. Uh huh. Right. There's mm. your there's your extra damage to get him to ten. <laughs> he's gonna go for it. <laughs> it's never gonna offer him pyro, but he's. Gonna... I just what hope it just does. Oh, he doesn't play it. Fine. <laughs> Would have been so sick. So now, wait. He has to play the shield, or he dies to Zephyrus. Yeah. A one one. Oh, 
Okay, there's no way you can get through the time I'm telling right now. No, not just with Zephyrus. Just trying to see if there's any top deck that does it as well. See a mat does the first bit of the job, but definitely not the second. This goes face. This always <laughs> yes. goes face. Trade into the 1-1. One -one. Just in case. You have to have lethal next turn, like guaranteed. That's the problem. You can't Monster. let Viper play Zephyrus, pick Pyroblast, and then like draw some defensive card that you don't have lethal through. Well, funnily enough, you can't even Marsh spawn next turn. His board's full. Yeah, I was kind of worried about the Soul of the Forest for, for sorry, Soul of the Murloc yeah. for that exact reason. Okay. Oh, I guess he could trade the Murloc away into the Zephyrus, right? So I guess it's fine. Well, I, I mean, if he'd have gone, yeah, I mean, I guess sure. It makes sense. Still, always dicey when you're looking at board space if you need to play me. Oh, <laughs> your wish is my suggestion. Is it gonna give him? I'm intrigued. Shadow Flame. It's a brawl. Okay. I feel like that hungry crab should have been played just for that. Oh no, they're all Murlocs, right? They're now. all Murlocs now. Yeah, yeah I forgot it's about It's because you said Saw the Forest had it locked in my head that they were tree ends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine the Waste Warden. Oh. oh, game winning. Except not really. I must move quickly. <laughs> Except every outcome when, when it's done. Yeah. Hungry crab there. No dominance. Is this a slight issue? There isn't that much power on board. What does Viper have? Viper has a true silver champion. Pharaoh's Blessing will not do it because I imagine Switz is never going to give him a, a live minion to attack with. Uh, Blessing of King, same story. Underlight Angling Rod. It's more damage from hand and maybe a charge. Power. Blessing of King, same story as Pharaoh's Blessing. I was I was looking at deck list. You have to tell me. Does he need to make that space? Okay, I mean sure. It's it's fine. It's just weird, he took Ancestral Healing and then didn't trade with the minion that he could then heal back up to full and put Ancestral Healing on. Okay. He just held it in hand instead. It's fine though, like, he needed a bit of board space for Rush Minion and up in the 4 5 dawns. I was like, it's gonna be it. There were some chances for Viper, but it just didn't happen. And I will say, congratulations to Swids for booking himself a spot on Sunday in the top four, but also, that weapon got some. Good four drop legendaries. What was it? Nozdormu and Kargath? Like, if that weapon did that every time, I think everyone would be playing it. Wow. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, you know, a couple of slots are pretty, you know, well diluted with good legendaries, as, you know, you were talking about with uh, with some of the slots that are available. But yeah, four, there definitely seems to be a fair few whiffs that he could have got there that were not just an 8 8 and a rush minion that potentially locks his opponent out of the game if the prime gets drawn. Um, not that the the four four really ended up having that big of an impact. I think any like similarly sized minion at that point uh, would have done the job just as well. But now you can see Swids, the player who is already qualified for Division A when it comes to our round robin stage next week and onward. He is the player that is going through through to top four, whereas the player who really needs it, the player who needs not only top four but in fact top two to be guaranteed, uh, Viper, he is going to have to keep scrapping for his future down in these decider matches. Yeah, I do think it's important, although Swids is safe in Division A, I do think it's important that uh, it's not overlooked that almost all the time when we talk about players and how good they are, we talk about consistency, right? Uh, look at Hunter Ace over the past two years or so, maybe even more actually. But now Swids, he won last week and now he's in the final day again, even if it doesn't matter in terms of which division he places into, well, he's done incredibly well two weeks in a row in a very stacked Swiss format and tournament. So even though the points don't directly impact the outcome of his placement, he's just doing really good. And that's awesome for him, right? Like, that's impressive. And if he continues to do that through the next few weeks of round robin, then I think a lot of people will maybe forget a little bit more about some of the performances he had last year in seasons one and two of Grandmasters and he can become more of one of those what people view as like a staple name in Grandmasters Europe, uh, Europe region because he will be uh, more of like on the pedestal up with some of the players such as Hunter Ace such as Bunny Hopper for example. Yeah for sure um, yeah it's a, it's a big climb to get up to that level of, uh, of notoriety but I think um, Swids didn't necessarily do himself too many favours in a couple of spots mm -hmm. last season. He did okay, but there was a couple of points where he looked a little bit shaky, a couple of points where he brought 
a really weird deck list. I think where he even like confessed he just forgot to include some cards some weeks, which is you know that's just sloppiness. Like he can't yep. can't be doing that. Um, but yeah, it looks much much more comfortable, much more happy. And honestly, I keep saying it, but just like like he belongs in Grand Masters this season. He just looks like he's chilling much more on camera and just having a good time with his game. So long may it continue. Yep, really impressive overall from Swid's last couple of weeks and overall in Grand Masters this season. But we are going to be moving on to our next match. It's Boston versus Silvername, which is the lower bracket first match. 